On the horn dot com. On the horn dot com. <laughs> And we're back on the horn on the horn.com. You're listening to WTNF with guest host Brian Lee and our friend Paul Winter. Hello. And I'm Dave Moore behind the board. So, before we get started with any touching news or any of this other silliness that we've got here, uh, we just want to wish uh, Chris Didden, get well, buddy. Uh, we know you're sick. Take all your uh, take all your vitamins and your medication and all that stuff and get better and get you back here next week. Please. We miss you. <laughs> yeah. We miss you. And Lord knows I can't keep drinking all this sicky sweet stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we have for tonight, boys? So what we Paul and I had been emailing back and forth the last couple of days, and he said, how about you just do a night where you focus on the stuff that you guys do down at the bar? What Black Eyed Sally's is known for is a lot of very, very sweet mixed drinks our specialty items have a lot of different stuff in it but there's uh they're very very much on the sweet side so we're gonna pour off some interesting stuff tonight i've got four different yeah four different specialty drinks i made them a few hours ago so they're still pretty cold i packed them in ice we've got uh, a couple of little sippy cups with us <laughs> and if you'd like to partake i highly recommend all of them this this I, one here is my the first one is one of my favorites because it's something i started making at city. home yeah, yeah. For you. <laughs> I I will gladly partake. Okay. Only because it has been a while since I've actually graced the doors of Black Eyed. Well, and, and I'm I'm remiss in that. We'll have to figure out a way to get you down there. I will say, <laughs> if you're looking for a really good band, come down Saturday night. I will actually be there Saturday night as a spectator. Nice. I do. I only do. I pick and choose who I want to go see. Um, this is one that I want to go see. And the only reason I didn't go see Lucky and, and the guy that I played for you guys earlier, Sean Kellerman and Lucky, I had to work open to close on Saturday, and there just wasn't any reason for me to be down there yeah, for I can any more hours than I needed to be <laughs> Not without having there. a cot down there. So <laughs> <laughs> We have four different cocktails that we're going to try tonight, all on the menu down at Sally's. The first one, actually one is, one is not any longer, but will probably be going on as the, as the seasons change. The first is a Mississippi Mojito. Uh, mm, then we have the Perky mm. Peter, which the full name is Perky Peter's Panty Dropper. Then there's the Southern <laughs> Slam and the Hurricane, which is the drink that we are mostly Ooh. known for. And mm. we do it a little different than Pat O's. It's, it's our own version of. So, and I, I as can, I said, gentlemen, uh, be ready for a headache because it's a lot of sweet stuff. <laughs> it's a lot of sugar. I can see uh, the Hurricane as being a very appropriate drink for this season yes yeah i think it's gonna be a long one this is miserable outside by the way mm. yeah i was not ready for that today thank mm. you isaac i'm good with the i'm good with the <laughs> rain that didn't really bother me but i stepped outside at like 3 30 and it was like 106 percent humidity but it still wasn't raining <laughs> like come on either rain or don't please do something <laughs> <laughs> so so first up is first up is a mississippi mojito uh, this one is near and dear to my heart because it is something I concocted at the house. Ooh. Um, I like to drink. I also like to mix things and just see how different things work. And when you make drinks, it's a lot like making food items. You look to layer your flavors. So what I did with this is I've got, there's only four ingredients in it and it may taste like a lot more. There's Tito's vodka, which to me is the best vodka on the planet. Hey. There is St. Germain, which is an elderflower liqueur. There is mint leaf. And lemonade. Ooh. So what you get is some citrus. You get some herbal. You get some floral. And then you get the kick from the vodka. So that's what I'll pour off for you guys now. Which All is right. interesting because from what I understand, mojitos are generally a rum drink. Correct. So having vodka is a neat twist. Keep in mind, when we name drinks down there, everything usually has some kind of a southern name, no matter what. So we kind of have to. The minute you see mint, you automatically say mojito. When you taste this, you'll actually say mojito, and it makes sense. And the Mississippi I was going with Country Time Lemonade was basically the thought in my head. Okay. So that's where, that's where the name came from. So we've been pouring these off for a few weeks. If you'd like a little mint leaf. Pass it to our host. Oh, sure. Oh, 
Yes. And we've had these at uh, at parties and picnics for about the last year. Hmm. So it's something that we've been we started out playing with and just kept going. And I love it. I find it incredibly refreshing. This is usually going to be served to you in like. We're, we've been doing it lately, and we changed our glassware completely. We went to oh wow, we went to a um, uh, little mug, like you'd get your uh, like a, a bell jar. Uh, okay, you know what I'm talking about? Yep. Uh, yep. Mason jar, mason jar, a uh, handled mason jar. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that we don't serve in that is the hurricane, which comes in the beautiful hurricane glass. So, well, cheers, cheers. Mm, it's quite floral. Yeah, it's well balanced. Yeah. You get, like I said, you get a little bit of everything. Mm. I just, I like to, I like to layer mm. the flavors, like you're making, a mm. good sauce or whatever. Right. So you've got your, you get your kick from the vodka again, mm -hmm. and then you get your citrus, yep. your floral, your your herbal, and it just, I, I love the, I love the the depth of it. I just like the, it's a great drink. Mm. So the coughing, by the way, was not because, it is a strong drink which sometimes <laughs> is the appropriate bodily response to heavy in the alcohol range um i just almost inhaled it <laughs> which is not a good thing to do that with a drink more and more it's got nothing to do with age honestly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you paul uh, anytime <laughs> so what do you think over there dave this is a refreshing summertime drink exactly this exactly uh, and even over I, I wouldn't even do it over ice i would use one of those stones that we've been talking about on mm -hmm. the show from time to time mm -hmm. because it doesn't need more water nope. it's mm. it's perfect the way that it is you could also My god you this could is also good. do it in a shaker and pour it off as a martini, martini right yeah. yeah exactly yeah I'd, so I'd any of that would any of that would work i would prefer wow. it that way i think I actually believe that when we uh, we're doing a, uh, I say we, I am doing a thing <laughs> down at the Great Hall on the twenty seventh of September, which is they they do this thing called the Artini, where it's a bunch of mm. the restaurants from the area mm. do send two or three people to make a bunch of different drinks. However, whatever they like is a spotlight mm. item, and I think this is what I'm going to use this year. Last oh, year I did a thing called a chocolate buttercream, mm. and it was it was. It was one of those where I see all the different ingredients that everybody else is using, and it's like everything is really ultra expensive. And they're like, but all you've got is like really inexpensive stuff. And I'm like, I'm just here to prove to you that you don't have to spend a million dollars to make a great cocktail. Right. So it was it was Bailey's, uh, Buttershot Schnapps, a little bit of dark cream de cocoa, mm -hmm. and whipped cream vodka. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And it tastes wow. just like a chocolate buttercream cookie. So, I mean, uh, uh, candy. And it was it was fun watching all the people with the we'll be back for dessert. All right, we're back again. <laughs> can we can, can we, I'll, I'll stay and pour them all night. I don't care. It's, but it was just it was fun seeing just that you could beat everybody's everybody thinking that super, you have to spend so much. Super and it's expensive. Nice to, stuff. I mean, it's yeah. nice to spend and splurge, but you really don't have to to make it good as long as it's balanced. That's really all. When is this occasion again? What? Uh, it's called Artini, and it's Artini. just like uh, yeah. I, it's the 27th of September, and it's at the Great Hall that's attached to the train station in yeah. Hartford. Uh -huh. And it, oh. I think it's a free event. I, I'm almost certain it was a free event last mm. year where the public just goes in and has at it. Ooh. And it, I believe there were 20 of us last year, 20 different bars and, and restaurants all involved. So, I can safely assure you that were I to show up at that event, that your drink would be something that I would indulge in Quite a bit. It is very tasty, mm. very tasty. I put in the in the bag of tricks that I've got here tonight. I brought two drinks that are mine. This is one, and the other one will come out later. Uh, it's based off of a Long Island iced tea, mm. bunch of different stuff. But I, we changed the name, and then two of Sally's like full on signature drinks. So very nice, very nice. Uh, yeah, I just I dig it. I think it's fantastic for the summer. And even though the summer is, some people are saying over, I don't ever believe summer's over. It's always, you can always have a nice refreshing drink. Frankly, given the fact that the season technically isn't over until September 21st. Exactly. I have no problem <laughs> with continuing. Yeah, Labor Day is technically not anything other than 
a day in which we celebrate the work of labor in the United States. <laughs> it has come to mean much more. You can't wear white after Labor Day. What? Really? No. Uh, also, uh, it's a little kind of funny story. When we first moved to the States, we lived in Manhattan, and uh, we went, uh, our, our good friends came over to visit us, and uh, they came for the end of August and the fir first week in September, so that, that covered Labor Day. So there was a particular bar, the, uh, uh, the Odeon in Soho. Uh, this was in the 80s. And uh, they did great strawberry daiquiris, mm -hmm. you know. So we had, you know, did quite well on those. And then um, the day after Labor Day, we went back for a strawberry daiquiri. Sorry. Gone. Labor Day's gone. We can't serve you one. <laughs> That's <laughs> just wrong. <laughs> like white it's, pants? Yeah, what exactly. It? <laughs> exactly. It's, it's crazy. So it's... When was it this? Happens. What year? Uh, this would be about eight, 84. <laughs> so they're just like sticking strictly to the season, not... Mm. Uh, whatever man i'll make you whatever you want whenever exactly. as long as i have as long as i have the ingredients to make it i will make it and if i don't have the ingredients i'll ask you what it's supposed to take like and what color it is and i'll get it about as close as, yeah right. i'll get Absolutely. it as, as long as i've got something close i can make yeah. it work yeah now so, what were your thoughts about this particular concoction paul this one i liked a lot i thought it was very refreshing it was well balanced um i like the floral notes about it actually i Yes, I could. I could get into those. That is in, on a that's hot day. Saint Germain gives it the mm. the the floral. It's an elderflower liqueur, mm. and I describe it usually to people at the bar if you've never heard of it. As I say, it is basically the bacon of liqueurs because everything <laughs> that you put it in, it makes it better. And that's nice. what bacon does to any food item. You put bacon on it, it's good. Bang! This stuff is the same way. It just adds that another depth that you're not mm. used to, and you can't pinpoint what it is. Mm -hmm. So. And it's fun to make drinks with it because I just uh, people are like, what is that? What is that? God, I don't know what that is. That's all it usually is, and I'll, I always I I beat this stuff to death. So <laughs> they make a bacon flavored vodka now. <laughs> they make a bacon flavored anything right now. Wow, <laughs> perfect on toast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what else do we have for tonight? <laughs> okay, so that was the first one. Off to a flying as, start. As you can see, I haven't really, I don't have the spectacular uh, bag of tricks that Elliot brings in with everything okay. labeled and nicely Oh, interesting mm -hmm. color we have here. Yeah. Okay. Wow. This is something that's been on Sally's menu for about, I don't want to say, between 12 and 14 years. Ooh. Uh, Perky Peter's Panty Dropper. Peter was one of, I believe, one of the original bartenders down there when they asked, when our owner asked them to start making their own signature drinks from each bartender this was what he came up with um it is blue curacao malibu pineapple juice and sour mix splash of seven up and on an average summer night you will see about 50 of these out and mm. it's all women who drink these things all the time mm. and and wow give me a panty chopper <laughs> <laughs> Looks like something that Kermit the Frog would drink. Yes. <laughs> it goes green because of the the fruit juice, it's right? The, well, it's, it's the, the it's the, the blue it's the yellow, yeah, yeah, the yellow the... from the from the pineapple juice right. mixed with the blue curacao is going to yeah. turn it that phew, weird color. Sometimes it's bluer, sometimes it's not. It just depends on which one of us is pouring. If it's at yeah. the bar, it's usually going to be a lot bluer than this. But yeah, I do a mean blue margarita actually with blue curacao instead of triple sec. We did those. Mm -hmm. those, were based, also, right? those were so. also on the on the mm -hmm. menu for a little mm -hmm. while. It was mm -hmm. a true blues margarita. Mm, right. We used eighteen hundred and Ooh, nice. So. Cheers. Cheers. Oh my. Mm. Oh, I like that. Mm hmm <laughs> That is And definitely... again, it doesn't even taste like booze. So That is a tropical yeah. drink. Yeah. Is it panty dropper, you say? Yeah. Yeah. Perky Peter's panty dropper. <laughs> I, I could see this as being served in a coconut cup mm. with one of the little right. umbrellas. Or in a fishbowl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Wow. Pineapple wedges. You're right, though. This mm. is mm. incredibly sweet. Yeah, and it doesn't really taste like booze, and that's the that's the no. scary part, because your, your blue curacao is, as you said, is an mm. orange-flavored liqueur, mm. but it's not a strong strong mm. liqueur mm. by any stretch of the imagination and malibu well it's coconut flavored rum so it smells like suntan lotion mm. 
Yep. Well, Tasha definitely... says that sounds pretty awesome. Come on in, Tasha. I'll mix you a couple up. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't be shy. Uh, warning, Tasha. You will like this. Perhaps too much. I can see why this is a favorite amongst Hold the girls. The yeah. Yeah. It's been uh, it's been on the menu, off the menu, on the menu, off the menu, and I, from here on in, I think it's probably got to stay because we just do just a ton of them. So oh yeah. Again, sorry. Updated. It's Malibu, Malibu Curacao. Yep. Pineapple juice. Pineapple juice. Splash of sour. Splash of seven up. Okay. Oh, seven so, up. Okay. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I like the I like the sweetness more so than the carbonation. Mm. So yeah. I, I'm not a big fan of carbonation. So. Hmm. Very good. Hmm. Very good. Mm-hmm. So. Wow. Oh, we I might have to go around why. again. <laughs> <laughs> the second half of the show, right? Well, the, uh, the, it's definitely a sweet <laughs> drink. There's no question about oh, yeah. that. There is yeah. definite fruit to it. Mm. No again, issue it's about nothing, that. It's nothing that I I don't like stuff like this. This is not my wheelhouse as mm. far as what I consume. Mm. I'm a whiskey guy. Mm. You know, I like vodka with ice. <laughs> I don't like right. all the other stuff, but. Every now and again, I like to dabble in stuff, and mm. and that's what that's this is where some of this stuff comes from. Mm. So, and I think everybody, every, anybody who bartends, has yeah. that that little a creative, mix. yeah, that chemistry weirdo thing going on. So, now this is also not a drink that is necessarily beholden to a season. This is something no. that you would likely have anytime you want around the yeah, year. Exactly. That that's why I said it has to stay on the menu all the time, right? Because it doesn't yeah. really need any reason to have it. As, hmm. Yeah, I'm glad you like it. I didn't know you were a big Malibu guy. I'm not. I'm. I'm <laughs> not. But I'm thinking. Well, if I was poolside, hmm. of course, with palm fronds waving gently in the breeze. No, 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 no. On, on the tree still. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could also see this being served in an actual coconut. Yep. That would be oh, awesome. Yep. Very good stuff. Well done. <laughs> what do we have from the chat room? Uh, Tanya says she's still got her gift card, so she's uh, just saying she might have to make it down. <laughs> <laughs> and she says uh, Malibu always works poolside. <laughs> Ooh, different wow. color. Wow. Different color. You're going when through I tell the you, spectrum here. Well, that's the, that's the idea. When we... When we or when I'm concocting things, I have an idea of I want to see – I like colors. I just mm. like to see a bunch of different colors. Right. So I want to mm. see a little blue. Mm. Like the, the my lemonade has that uh, – it's yeah. a little bit of maybe yellow. This is brown. Uh, and when I tell you what's in it, it's going to floor you because it doesn't taste like any one of those things. Mm. It's just this is something that I – this is – I've been making this for – oh, my God – 22 years mm. somewhere thereabouts wow. um it's something that i came up with when i started working i worked for 16 years for pizzeria uno's restaurants mm. and this was something that i came up with and it sold so well at our place we had actually had it added onto our menu so and this we called back then it was called the hawaiian suicide obviously <laughs> to uh to do things like we do at our place we changed the name up and it's called the southern suicide down at sally's and i'm fairly mm. certain this is going back on the menu in the fall and again, to me, this has no season. It doesn't mm. need to be a seasonal drink. So while we're pouring up, yeah, I will pay some bills. Okay, and Cheers. we will uh, be right back momentarily to give you a rundown on the last two drinks. You're on the horn. On the horn.com. Budwitz & Meyer Jack PC is a large Connecticut-based CPA firm with offices in Cheshire and Farmington, Connecticut. Large enough to handle engagements of enterprises with annual revenues in excess of $100 million, yet small enough to cater to smaller businesses and individual clients who expect personalized attention from partners and staff. Client service is the cornerstone of our practice. Our clients have a fixed fee for their audit and tax work. What this means to the client is we're approachable. Personal communication and client services make for strong relationships. Budwitz & Meyer Jack, certified public accountants. Sanditch Travel for business and leisure. We'll take you there. Sanditch Travel has been proudly serving Connecticut since 1960. That's over 50 years. And we're ready for another 50 years of superior service. Whether you prefer to come in, call in, 
or log on. We invite you to explore how efficient, diverse, and fun it is to book through Sanditz Travel. Save your money and your time with us. Sanditz Travel. We'll take you there. You're listening to WTNF, and we are also brought to you by CentralCTDental.com. Doctors Camp, Sambor, and Lupini. For serious issues or routine checkups, go nowhere else. Easy to get to on the Plainville Farmington line. Call 860-747-5761 or make an appointment online at centralctdental.com. We're also brought to you by Deepwater Seafood of Avon, the only fresh fish place that you'll find in the Farmington Valley, uh, located on Route 44 in Avon. It's open six days a week, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. and Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Deepwater has fresh fish, three deliveries daily to meet your needs. Deepwater has a menu of grilled fish items, scampi, fish and chips, soups, bisques, and chowders for your catering needs, authentic paella, cedar plank, salmon sides, and always the traditional New England clam bake. Deepwater has the very best shrimp cocktail that you'll find anywhere. I can attest to that. Call in your order at 860-676-9657 and they'll have your order ready for pickup when you arrive. Deepwater Seafood of Avon, just for the halibut. And now, back to our show. So I would like you to tell me a little more about the the taste of the suburbs. Okay, yeah. As a a person who's in Hartford all the time, we Mm. do our Taste of Hartford, but I haven't heard anything about this. Yeah, I know. It was was a good timing because we took last week off, and... um, we did. We're always on top of this, but I, I think the the advertising wasn't um, particularly spot on for it. You know, it's it's the taste of um, Farmington Valley this week as well. So you've got you know Avon, okay. and Sibsbury, and all. Um, but the the, um, the taste of the suburbs last week was really Glastonbury and Manchester. Okay. And uh, you know, the, it's the um, uh, the typical offering is a three-course prefix mm-hmm. uh, for twenty dollars and twelve cents, um, and it's really good. There's uh, r- relatively limited choice in most restaurants, but um, uh, and also some restaurants did a twenty dollars and twelve cents bottle of wine as well. You know, so you can really so be for fixed I think budget. That's awesome, especially it's the bottle of wine. Yeah, you know, that's I think that's fantastic. It's a very good deal, and you know, you know, the Max Chain, for instance, they were. Right there, we did Max Fish, Max Amore, and did rooftop on on my birthday. That was uh, that was excellent. So we we got all different styles of restaurants doing this, and you can you can kind of check out the restaurants doing this. I I think, and uh, but um, we did the taste of Hartford quite a bit, mm-hmm. but um, some of them were less enamoured of making it obvious, uh, yeah. like Morton's, for instance. Uh, we had to prize the taste of Hartford menu <laughs> out of them, <laughs> and the service was decidedly surly, in my opinion. Uh, they didn't after like that. really, yeah, <laughs> that's just no. I, that's our yeah. experience. Sorry, yeah. Morton's, but that's what we experienced. But um, you know, others were fantastic. So, and especially ma- the, the Max Chain does a great job of this. And um, in w- when it's a taste of Hartford, the Max Downtown is just like a fantastic deal. You know, twenty dollars and twelve cents, and the the quality of the if food they don't is skip always on up anything. there. Yeah, no, they don't skip on anything. It's, it's right. amazing. And, you know, we do it all the time. So, I would have thought that just having any of the Max Group restaurants in this with mm. the taste of the suburbs, that there would have been more advertising. Yeah, just just on yeah, just right. on that name alone. It, it's that's two restaurants. Yeah. So, it seems you almost need to be on there. You, you know, the email list, and uh, if if you're all already on it, you get get to find out that it, it was in the current, but you had to kind of. You huh. know, find it because uh, I talked to a lot of guys at the golf club, for instance, and no, no, no idea, no idea. Really? Clueless. See, so it wasn't yeah. just us on the other side of the nope. river and nope. and us nope. hanging out in Hartford all the nope. time, missing it. I wish I had known; I would have gone. Yeah, I love to. I love to support the locals. Anything yeah. you know, these guys work their tails off. That Max Group stuff; they they oh, yeah. they make great food. They yeah. never ever ever disappoint. So yeah, yeah, I've never had a bad meal there once, mm. and the service. They train it's them very spectacular. well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, uh, good shout out. Drink number three. Drink number three, as I said, we, uh, originally started out being called a Hawaiian suicide. What happened was when I was working for Uno's, the my our biggest selling drink at the time 
was a Long Island iced tea. Mm -hmm. And back then, we used to make them in our 20-ounce beer glasses. So a lot of my customers were saying, Ouch. you know, I really like the idea of the Long Island iced tea, and I get really cocked, ha, ha, ha. But after about one and a half, the sour mix really starts to kill me. Right. So can you come up with something that's still got the same amount of booze, but it's not going to, you know, taste like battery acid after mm -hmm. a little while? Mm -hmm. So I said, sure, I'll whip up something here. And this is what we hammered out, and this is what it ended up being. And it's vodka, triple sec, amaretto, Southern Comfort, Kahlua, mm. pineapple juice, and sour mix. Mm. Wow. So the sour mix is more on the splash of side just to cut the sweetness mm. from the pineapple. the pineapple juice, which I don't like. As I said, I've, you know, I've never, and this is 20-plus years I've been making this drink, I've never liked sicky, sicky sweet. So even this is kind of balanced. So mm -hmm. the Kahlua was more for the color than anything. I wanted something that was close to a Long Island iced tea mix. And right. I mean, that's it doesn't get much closer than that color-wise. Nope. You don't taste the Southern Comfort. And I people, I don't like this. I don't like that. I'm like, just, just, just trust me. Just trust me. And we started making it, and we ran with it, and it sold like crazy. So James asked me a few years ago to make something for the restaurant again. And I was like, here, try this. It's something that's been, it's been around forever. And it has Southern and, Comfort in it? <laughs> because when I was like 18, SoCo was a wonderful thing. Sure. All the rage. But <laughs> as I got older, it was like, uh, and my liver would cringe. Yeah. Uh, we all had that night, especially with that particular, <laughs> Never again. With that particular <laughs> liquor. We've all had that night. <laughs> I've got to tell you, this, the, it's an interesting, it's a delicious taste. It's, not what I expected, mm -hmm. particularly given the ingredients. Right. <laughs> um, much mellower. Mm. Yep. Really. Yep. Um, you know, the uvula was like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Okay, this is okay. <laughs> the fact that everything is so well hidden means that it's perfectly balanced. So, and I love, I always love the, why would you put Kahlua in it? That's just weird. And like, again. It's for color and color only because right. you don't taste coffee no. at all. No. So it, it truly is. It's just a splash. It's just for color. And I, I it's one of those things that I love. I love this silly drink. I've, I've made it forever. I, I, I always dug it. And the fact that we could get a chain restaurant to put it on the menu mm. made me feel even better. So, <laughs> like, you got to add a button onto the screen. Thanks. <laughs> what did you think about it, Paul? Uh, it's good. Uh, again, uh, yeah, the banner. So Southern Comfort, no way. I couldn't detect that <laughs> whatsoever. Um, yeah, they are sweet, aren't they? But yeah. I find it a little sweet. Yeah. But uh, it's it's good. I couldn't have too many of them. No, no. It, it screams hangover. Yeah. Yes. It really does. It screams hangover. Yeah. So. But good. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, I could do one mm. without too much mm. damage. More than that, and just yeah. <laughs> Although my uh, <clears throat> one of my cousins is a doctor, mm -hmm. and he is kind of a brain neurologist type uh, who has done work with um, significant brain injuries, significant neural issues. Um, not so much like spinal column, but more. The, the, the brain injury that occurs from a car accident, that kind of thing. Concussing and... Right. Okay. And and how do you get the brain to basically regenerate itself mm. or at least carve out new channels so that right. it can operate? He always told me that the best way to deal with avoiding a hangover is before after you finish drinking, before you go to bed, have at least eight ounces of water more if possible, mm -hmm. and aspirin, yep, and a candy bar. It doesn't matter which. It some chocolate is a good thing. Wow, okay. Really? Hmm. Well, it takes care of everything that you that your your hangover basically has an upset stomach. Right. It usually has uh, dehydration. Mm -hmm. Correct. And you know, headache, whatever. <laughs> the thing that he was pointing out was when you are drinking heavily, mm -hmm. you become essentially hypoglycemic yeah that's the reason for the candy bar is to restore some of the sugars back into the bloodstream 
because the hypoglycemic aspect has a direct impact on your headache, okay? It also can act as a vasoconstrictor, mm -hmm. which is why you have the aspirin to open up the blood hmm. so that you're not dealing, and any impurities that are causing the headache are likelier to get flushed out sooner. Same, same thing with, with the water because you become dehydrated. Right. And the two of us were discussing this earlier. It's also the, uh, the hair of the dog, which basically does the same exact thing. It'll thin out your blood enough that yep. it gets everything mm -hmm. pumping through the body and gets you back to normal <laughs> or something close. So, At least not quite as pain. <laughs> right, exactly. Oh, so a Bloody Mary in a candy bar. Mm. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Interesting. Almost as good as an aspirin. <laughs> <laughs> and for our fourth oh. concoction. And this is the last. Oh, oh like my. Chinese sauce. This is the, yes. Duck sauce. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't see any it's, duck swimming in it, though. It's not, it's not General Sow's chicken. The colors are awesome. This is... Uh, this is the drink that's been on the menu since day one. Hmm. This is the baby. This is Sally's Hurricane. This is white rum, usually Bacardi. Well, what usually? Hmm. Bacardi. Myers Dark, Captain Morgan, Malibu, Grenadine for the color, mm. pineapple juice, and OJ. Okay. On, an, on an average... On an average Friday or Saturday evening, I will probably make, I'm guessing, oh my God, Ooh. a lot of gallons of these. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of about how you many. measuring gallons. Eh? Yeah, yeah. It, it usually goes, I will try to, to get the, the jump on how many we sell, Ooh. and I'll pre-make like two gallons of these, and we'll go through that in the first two hours. Wow. So yeah, and it just and it just it's all night long. You don't stop making them. It just goes and goes and goes. So again, it's it's Bacardi, Myers Dark, Captain Morgan, Malibu, Pineapple OJ, Grenadine, and this is this is the drink. If you this is our signature. This is our the mm. the pulled this is pork. The summertime. This is our ribs. Mm. This is everything that we do. This is this is the drink that made the bar famous. Seems as kind of a go to at the. The pineapple and the Malibu you, you, you use quite a bit hand, right? as, as a hand base. To hand. Yeah, hand right. to hand. Yeah. They, they, they work so well together mm -hmm. on in, in everything that they do. Mm. So, yeah, they just go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. You could use other rums, but why? Mm. You know, it just, get, again, it gives you an, a different, you know it's there. You know what Malibu is. You can always mm -hmm. smell it. It's that, that coconut, that, yep. that sunscreen. It's just there. You, <laughs> what is that? Oh, that's ooh, right. It smells, like, yeah, it smells like sunscreen. A, a salute to the captain. <laughs> yes, you can drink some and rub some on your chest. Yeah, well. exactly. And keep uh, keep from getting a sunburn. <laughs> now this one has a little more of the what I would call the typical alcohol effect. Yes. In that, my nose hairs, the cilia, suddenly start going, mm -hmm. and I could also feel a little. Bite is too hard, harsh of a term, mm. but there was a little nip. Mind you, when you read the menu down there, it actually says you are only allowed to. Ah. <laughs> you are only allowed to. So. I, 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 I could see why, because this is about as potent as a well-mixed iced tea. I, I will usually, on the second one, say to people, I hope you don't have anything to do in the morning. <laughs> hope you're not performing surgery. <laughs> not flying, yeah. Captain. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, you'll get sillier and sillier. Mm -hmm. Now, there was a point in time in, in my law school career when I was actually studying for finals, and uh, a classmate of mine and I went out to we we, we um, I was living in a beach house in Milford. Couldn't help myself. There were two spots that I would go to, Knickerbockers, which was right in the mall in Milford, and the other was Bennigan's. Bennigan's made a very mean iced tea. And by very mean, I mean it tasted great, but boy, would it kick you. <laughs> that night, 
my friend and I had eight iced teas. <sighs> nice work. Okay. And it was four apiece. <laughs> and we finished them in less than an hour. Oh, nice work. And the alcohol had not quite penetrated my brain just yet. So I was not slurring my words. I was not acting in any way, shape, or form that would lead you to believe uh, I was not visibly intoxicated. Let's let's use the legal parlance. Mm -hmm. We tried to order a fifth. They said no. <laughs> <laughs> I said, why are you shutting us off? You've had four iced teas in 45 minutes. <laughs> I said, am I slurring my words? No. Am I having trouble with my balance? No. Am I speaking nonsensically? No. Uh, okay. If I'm not showing any signs of visible intoxication, why are you shutting me off? You had four Long Island iced teas <laughs> in 45 minutes. Just wait. Right? Yeah. You aren't doing it now. <laughs> I said, the house that I live in is a eight-minute ride. Six if the lights are right. <laughs> Can I have one more? No. Never went back to Bennigan's again. <laughs> hey, but you know what? How about if I take a taxi? Guess what? An hour and a half later, I was completely faced. <laughs> I was not quite out of my mind, but I was... Darn close to it. And Very nice. I kind of understood at that point in time, and especially the next day, when I was chewing on aspirin like they were candy, <laughs> why they said no. Oh. The hurricane is a dangerous drink. Oh, yeah. You hear rums, and everybody, ah, rums are like a sissy drink. No, 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 no. Rums are still up there proof-wise. It's not, it's not like these things are 35 proof. They'll right. work you. Mm -hmm. They'll work you. Let's put it this way. Um, most alcohol is basically uh, the fermentation of sugars. Now, what is rum? It is sugar-based. <laughs> <laughs> you really don't get much purer sugar nope. than that. <laughs> nope. And there's a reason why they can light 151 on fire. <laughs> Seriously. And wow, this was a great drink, though. Yeah. By the way, make sure you don't do those silly lit up fire drinks because they're dangerous. <laughs> I don't understand that. Somebody handed me one on the night of my stag party. Uh huh. Um, we did it at a place called Puerto Vallarta in Newington. Yep. Friends with the family that owns it. We'd, uh, we'd, I'd had way too much to drink. Mm -hmm. I was clearly overserved. <laughs> as you are supposed to be on your stag. I had plenty of people who were driving me home. Right. It didn't matter. Um, but some random girl who knew me came over. Congratulations, here. I'm like, thanks. And my friends were like, fuck. <laughs> 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 no flaming shots for this idiot. Didn't want to <laughs> set your face at, on didn't fire. Even look at it. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. <laughs> What's that smell <laughs> of burning pork? <laughs> Is that hair or flesh? Yeah, Either I don't way, know. it smells. It's <laughs> not a good thing. Not a good thing to do. Not a good thing to experience. It's a new variation on hot lips. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you would have looked really interesting oh. at the church the next day. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, actually, the next day, we did this. Uh, my stag was golf in the morning, restaurant at night, Yankee Stadium on Saturday. Nice. It was a weekend. Nice. I basically spent most of the day curled up in the fetal position in the second to last row at Old Yankee Stadium you wanting to die. Really enjoy the game. Wanting to die. Yeah. That's it. Wanting that's, to die. That that's how most Red Sox fans are <laughs> feeling right, right now. <laughs> yeah. Without the benefit of alcohol. <laughs> However, I walked into the guy who was my best man's apartment, and one of the guys that works with me had to drop his roommate off. He was going to do the fireman's test in Bridgeport. Ooh. So he came all the way back from Bridgeport, dropped him off at 6.30 or something like that to take the fireman's exam in Bridgeport, made it back to New Britain, and was cooking at my best man's house. I walked in at 8 o'clock, and I was like, 
Is that Eggs Benedict? <laughs> yeah, do you want some? No! <laughs> I want toast! <laughs> Give me toast. That's all I want. I just want toast. I'm, I'm dying. <laughs> so, why is it that when people uh, are hungover, they want grease? I don't know. I usually don't want anything. Okay. I don't McDonald's. want McDonald's. Does really well by mm. people who are hungover. Oh yeah! For some strange reason, I don't get it. The hash browns and the egg and muffin. Why? I mean, you peel off the paper from the hash brown, and you realize just how much grease was involved in the making of this food. <laughs> and there are some people who swear by it. I I cannot think of any physiological reason why this would be something that would be no. a good thing to do. However. If you break me off a Dunkin' Donuts croissant with sausage and egg, I'm all in for that. I will say. I, I don't even need to be hung over for that. Okay. I'm in. <laughs> wow. This, you know, so all of these drinks can be made all year round. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. They're not necessarily going to be on the menu all year round. No, I I kind of like to switch things up, and I'm I'm even considering throwing a couple of other, th looking at a couple of other things to make between now and, I'm figuring October first is when I'm gonna look to make a move on the seasonal change, we'll call mm -hmm. it, where I've got a bunch of coffee drinks mm -hmm. that I want to um, make more a part of what we do, and I don't think I think that's a an an area where we need to work a little harder is selling stuff like that, so. Coffee drinks, hot cocoa drinks, stuff like that. It gives you a little more wiggle room and a little more stuff that you can do and a lot more stuff that's kind of cool that most people don't usually have. Hmm. So, Anything that has hot butter rum in it, probably <laughs> a good idea for the fall, too. Absolutely. Maybe some okay. cider. Yep. Maybe Ooh, something yeah. with cider. So a little I've got some cider. ideas. Yeah, I've got some ideas. Everything is, everything is just kind of stewing right now, and I've got two days off where I'm going to – play a little bit i think these How next about couple mold days. wine do you do anything with mold we usually wine? don't i'm willing to try anything paul it's very hard to get yeah mold i'm willing wine, to try anything it's wonderful when you can my family has made fun of me for the last four christmases because i went to a family gathering and i brought mead oh right. with me yeah and what's this well think of it as fermented honey <laughs> okay why is it not pouring like honey? It's fermented. Come on. We're okay. Taste it. it. Doesn't taste like honey. It's not supposed to. It's alcohol. <laughs> the fermented there part. There is a sweetness to it that is definitely the honey part. Yeah. But and I have not been able to live it down for the last four or five years. <laughs> ah, Dave, you're bringing the mead this time? You're gonna be the only one drinking it. Come on. <laughs> We went to a vineyard slash meadery in the Finger Lakes a few years ago and mm -hmm. bought some other stuff. Mostly, I use it to cook with because mm. uh, it, mm -hmm. it has, again, it has a lot of different flavors that they incorporate into that. Yep. And I use it to cook with. I'll, I'll, mm. I'll reduce it and use it as I could see that as being a part of a glaze, yeah, too. Yeah, mm. exactly. So, hmm. But it's definitely, there's, there's certainly a place for that. Yeah, well, some things are just not your lost, family's table, but <laughs> just lost on the palates of many. Eh. You know, I, all I can think of is there are several like Christmas carols that go well with mead, hmm? and you know, uh, <laughs> one of the funniest things was I signed up for this English literature course because it was being taught by an associate dean. Ooh, associate dean, <laughs> and. What he was famous for was he'd start the course with Beowulf. And he would start the course bringing in a guitar and singing Beowulf because the old sagas were sung. Mm -hmm. And he would bring mead. <laughs> and all the class would partake in the mead and listen to the singing. The one year he didn't do that, your year, year your I year. signed up. <laughs> I was like, all right, he's he's an all right dude, but really? No mead? <laughs> really? It was too late to add drop. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris Didden, we miss you, lad. Please, get better soon. Get better.
hopefully next week we'll have the gang all here elliot will be back he was doing a little dinner this evening uh paul and i will most likely be back at least i will oh yes I'll okay i'm th <laughs> thirsty already so hopefully hopefully the uh the boys will all be back in town and 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 i will apparently still be behind the board so. we certainly <laughs> hope so <laughs> it would be very quiet without you. exactly <laughs> yes it would so yeah. i'm brian lee dave moore on the board paul winter as always, thank you guys thank you. very much. And talk to you next week on WTNF. You got it. You, we've been brought to you by Amazon.com, Gateway Financial Group, Sandus Travel, Sherpa Technologies, Bud Witts and Meyer Jack CPAs, Deepwater Seafood of Avon, and CentralCTDental.com. You've been listening to WTNF on the Horn, on the Horn.com. Catch us on Facebook, Twitter, anything else. Just follow. Talk to you next week. <laughs>